Yeah, and come and stand in the middle of the mats. Feet hip width apart. Soften the knees, tuck the pelvis under, perhaps wiggle the toes. Find the pelvic floor, start to draw in, find the TVA hollowing down towards the hips. Now just sort of open, lift the ribcage, but try not to kind of flare. So we're going to open and try not to arch in the lower back. So it's almost like, almost opening, but then kind of adjusting to good posture. So have a little go with that. Take the shoulders down and back, length at the back of the neck, crown of the head up towards the ceiling. So three times five seconds, pull in the pelvic floor, pull in TVA, big squeeze, hold for five seconds, and then we take a slow release. But when we do our five seconds, we'll go through our mandras on our fingers. So we'll go, so we'll go to the, um, the index finger and the thumb, and then the middle finger, then the ring finger, and then the little finger. And we'll just go, so five, four, three, two, and then one. So we go through like that, okay? All right. So, big squeeze, pelvic floor and TVA. Just go to one hand. Ready then. Five, four, three, two, one. Then you can just release. Other side, release pelvic floor, TVA. Pull in, nice and tight, 100%. Five, four, three, two, and one, release, go back to the other side, five, release pelvic floor, TVA, pulling in, five, four, three, two, one, and then let everything release, five, pull in, four, three, two, and then one, and release, try and get the other fingers straight with these mantras if you can, pulling in, five, four, three, two, and one, release. Last time on this one. Pulling in. Five, four, three, two, and one. And then release. Now I found that quite hard to remember doing the core whilst I was doing the fingers. This time, both hands. Pulling in 100%, tuck the pelvis under. Five, four, three, two, one. Let everything release. Two more. Pulling in. Five, Four, try and get the other fingers straight. Three, two, and one. And release. Last one. So much to think about. Five, four, three. Try not to hold the breath. Two, and one. And then a slow release. Now see if you can find your 50%. So the engagement's there. Pelvic floor, TVA. Breathing exercise. Um, we have done it before. Scrunch up the fists. Breathing in through the nose, lift the arms, breathing in through the nose again, open, breathing in again, lift, breathing out, release. Breathing in, 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 and release. Short, sharp inhales through the nose. Just cleansing all the airways, fresh energy into the body, opening there with the chest. So you've got your fists scrunched and then you release the fingers on the release. Check that you're still pulling in pelvic floor and TVA, keeping the pelvic pelvis tucked under and arching in the lower back. Just waking up the arms, the shoulders, keep the length there at the back of the neck. And if you feel like it when you breathe out through the mouth, you could just go, ah, up to you. Just taking it in your own pace with your own breath. Just start feeling a little bit of energy coming to you. Adding in, if you want, same exercise. Lift up and then release. Bend the knees. Same thing. Breathing in through the nose three times. Release through the mouth. Keep it going. Check the knees don't pronate in, the arches don't drop. Here we go, releasing with the lower back here as well. Four more. Two left. A 
and then just coming back up to centre to feel a little bit of energy now. So we can go to um, weights if you want or bring them in a bit later on but we're going to go for a side bend. So feet hip width apart and it's just sliding the hand down towards the side of the knee and recentering over to the other side. Start slowly with this lateral kind of bend and we can work into it. Breathing out as you lower, breathing in centre. Should feel as well, just even holding the weights just helps set the shoulders down away from the ears. So just check the shoulders aren't kind of hunched forwards if you've been kind of hunching forwards on a computer or anything like that. Maybe take a roll, take them back each time. Just to check, shoulders are down and back. Keep that connection there with the pelvic floor. If you want to add in, just place one weight kind of on the shoulder as you go over. And then you can switch. It's almost like a little, you can almost do like a little bicep curl. Lift and over. And lift and over. Breathing out still as you go over. Check when you're arching in the lower back. Hips are still. Three more. Last one. Shoulders down and back and go to the scapula set. So chuck, check the elbows are tucked into your side. They're not kind of lifting back here. So just opening and then bringing back together. Breathing out as you open. Now notice as you take the weights back that you don't lose your TPA. So are you doming in the tummy? So then check pelvis tucked under and that you're engaging TPA. You're pulling in that pelvic floor. So um, I think we did some little bits. We did a high knee on this last time. So we're going to do scapula set and then you can lift your knee up and then bring it down. And you can either switch sides each time, which is quite trippy. Or maybe try four on one side, four on the other. And you've really got to watch the arch there under the foot. So use your big toe. Squeeze the glutes. So it's almost like a glute activation exercise as well. Just to work with the balance as we do the scapula set. Also, another thing that happens is the hips can tilt. So just see if you can control the hips kind of hitching by pressing down with the other foot as you lift the other leg. So it's not kind of a, you're not kind of letting the hips lift. And we're centering through the hips. Then we're going to add in, so it's a lift and then a kickback and then lift and down. So it's an open, lift the knee. Just kick back, keep the knee bent, lift and down. Now the same thing with this is you want to just keep the hips down. So don't let them hitch up. So lift, kick back with the bent knee and then back. And you can switch over either each time or just do four on one side, four on the other. And here you're thinking about squeezing the glutes, pulling in the core, try not to tilt in those hips too much and hopefully by now you're feeling this in the shoulders and the scapula because it's quite a lot of work we've just done there on the shoulders. Try not to arch in the lower back. Two more. So Release from there, we're going to go to our squats, same as last week. So feet hip width apart, bend the knees. You can bring the um, weights forwards, hips back into space. Or if you liked it, that one to the side, one to the front, and then switch one to the side and one to the front. Control what's happening with the arches, try not to let them drop. Try and engage through the big toe. Don't let those knees, especially because we're taking one arm to the side, 
Try not to let one knee turn in. Breathing in as you lift, breathing out as you come down. Oh, my arms are so tired today. <laughs> I cycled up to, to Berkofer, which is quite a big uh, hill. <laughs> and you have to like grip the butt, you have to hold the bike quite, quite tight, like the head of us. <laughs> my arms, ah, <laughs> serves me right. <laughs> Four more. Two, last one. Then to the wide squat. So take a wide stance and you don't necessarily have to have your feet parallel. You can let them turn out slightly. Bring the weights and take them down to the floor. Then circle them all the way up, touch. Then down, touch. And then lift. So if it, if it really low, bringing them down to the floor doesn't suit you, you don't have to um, go all the way to the floor. You can just touch the weights together, hovering over the floor. Breathe in as you lift. Breathe in as you come down. Three more. Awesome. So then here, depending on how much weight you've got, so I'm going to put one down because it gets a bit too much for me, but we're going to do a wood chop. So we squat down and we put the wood, then we're going to take the weight towards one foot and then a big upper body twist, take the weight up to the far corner. I'll adjust my camera so you can see my feet as well. So you could hold two weights is what I meant by that. So you could, depending on how much you want to take, you're lifting up, so it's a really big upper body twist, but we're putting it into that squat this time. So four one side, and then four the other. It's almost like a big golfing, <laughs> big golfing swing, isn't it, as well? So it's too, sticking with the squat over to the other side. You can take the whole kind of Upper body, the shoulders rotate and twist around. You look up into that far corner as well. Two more. Breathing out as you lift. And then release. Place the wheat, uh, wheat, wheat, <laughs> weights on the floor. Balancing on one leg, close your eyes, count to ten. So just come and find a little bit of inner stillness. Perhaps press down with your big toes, squeeze your glutes. Slow down the breath. And then just take eight heel lifts. So literally take the weight towards the ball of the foot, towards the big toe and lower. So uh, I'm gonna hold on just because I, I didn't sprain my ankle, but I was running on rough ground and it kind, kind of went on in my ankle a little bit funny on this side. So I'm just gonna Go really steady on this side. Eight one side and then the eight on the other side. Keep the connection. So as you're lifting, you've got the glute squeezing, you're working with the pelvic floor, you're hollowing that TVA. Shoulders are relaxed. Then we'll switch sides, we'll close eyes, count to 10. Again, just slow down the breath. Just feel that in the muscles and the feet. And then take your eight lifts. Just taking the heel off the mat ever so slightly and lowering. And we're working those connections. Muscles all in the feet. Check that you're kind of going over the ball of the foot towards the big toe. Squeeze the glutes. Balance, keep connecting with the core.
So then we're going to stick with feet and ankles just for a sec. So we're going to go for a, a walk circuit. So I'll put my camera on the circuit. So, I mean, obviously you've got barefoot. So first of all, we're just going to take the weight towards the outsides of the feet and towards the, um, towards the little toes. So lift the heels and then you're going to walk along the length of the mat just here on the very, it's kind of like putting the weight towards the little baby toe. Now just check you're squeezing in the glutes with this, you're feeling this all the way up the body. And then walk back the same. They're just on the insides of the toes. The, I mean the outsides, the little toes. Heels are lifted. So then we do the opposite, so take the weight to the inside, the big toe, still lifting up the heels, so you can really feel like a massage here, like the ball of the foot, the arch of the foot. You might feel like this goes up towards your hips as well, like you get these lovely tiny little stretches around the hips and the pelvis. Still engage the pelvic floor, TVA. Works a little bit with balance here as well. So now we're on the heels, so see if you can lift the front bit of your foot up, all ten toes, the ball of the foot, so you're right up on the heels, <laughs> almost like penguins or something like that. <laughs> and you've got this in quite immediate connection from the glutes straight down to the heels. <laughs> it's a bit of a shuffle that one, isn't it? Now go with the whole foot, so we're not just working with the ball and the toes. So roll the whole foot over so the arch is lifted. And then walk on the outsides of the feet. So you're getting this stretch all over the feet with this one. This is called a calf walk circuit and it's also quite good shins. Um, calf muscles, this kind of does help release all the lower leg. Also worked a little bit with balance. Then the other way, so turn it so you're on the arches, and we wouldn't normally encourage this, but you'll find some really juicy stretches there in the hips. And then so if you can lift up your baby toes and walk along, you should feel like there's some stretching there in the pelvis. Last time, bring it back. See if you can lift up the baby toes. <laughs> so, last one, um, this one, scrunch up your toes and see if you can move yourself forwards. So, scrunch up your toes and shimmy forwards. And this is actually quite hard. <laughs> you have to squeeze your glutes at the same time. So, scrunch up your toes and, and see if you can shimmy yourself forwards. It's quite difficult. So move for the calf muscles and also strengthens the feet. Now if you want to make it super hard, cross your arms, because I it's easy to use your arms to help. <laughs> oh. So again, the strengthening here, the toes, the arches. You should feel the glutes here as well. So keep working with the glutes. Oh. It's quite tricky, isn't it? But again, we'll help us with those connections. Feet to glutes to core. <laughs> I think I'm only going to get one way. I don't think I'm going to go back. Mario's gone all the way there and back. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to test that now because we've obviously done a little bit of balance. So go back to with the weight. So with the weights, and we're going to go to the um, single leg deadlift, so just extend one leg behind, oh I can't see very well, but basically lift one leg, squeezing the glutes, and then just see if you can bring the weights down towards the floor, and lift it back up, and you can bend the knee, oh she goes, <laughs> and then a single leg shoulder press, so opposite arm lifts towards the knee that's lifted up. Then again, come down, same leg, 
the deadlift, then lift up. Four on one side and then we'll switch four on the other. And hopefully doing this after the calf walk circuit, just hopefully we've woken up some muscles with the circuit to kind of help us there on the balance. <laughs> and then over to the other side for same thing. So bending in the knee, extend back. See so if you can take the weights down to the floor, lengthen there through the hamstrings and then high knee. And lifting opposite the, the opposite arm up towards the ceiling. And then three more. Quite a lot going on with this move, isn't there? <laughs> Good glute strengthener. Good work with balance. <laughs> okay. Bring yourself down to the mat then. Take a downward dog. Just stretch out calf muscles, hamstrings. We're going to slow down the breath. Spread the fingers, spiral biceps towards each other, send the hips up towards the ceiling. If you're feeling a little bit tight, take a really slow walk in dog. So almost press down through one heel, the other knee bends and just take a moment. And then again, you can go to the other side. So just almost a couple of breaths in each one. I think sometimes we can rush through some of this and actually we can gain more if we just slow down a little bit on some of the stretches. Notice if your hips tilt as you bend into one knee and then see if you can kind of square the hips so they don't tilt so you can really feel those stretches at the backs of the legs. Aiming for the chest to go towards the thighs. As you get that stretch on the backs of the shoulders, sometimes you need to bend your knees to feel that stretch in there. A couple more breaths. Then just bring that down onto all fours, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. <laughs> 